Hello everyone, this is Shan from VKS presenting to you our next guidebook of the week series. This week we'll be looking at a fairly simple work instruction SOP on nozzle replacement. There's some interesting features to be looked at and as we go through the guidebook you'll see how easy it is to create a similar guidebook of your own just by using some interactive pictures, easy to read annotations, and some key elements. Well, let's just jump right into our guidebook of the week. We'll start off with our first step in our guidebook an image of the True Laser Tube 5000 equipment. The operator would be replacing the nozzle of this equipment here. Now you are open to adding any images or text steps as you'd like to start off your first step when creating a guidebook. On the left hand side here we do have some pictograms. Pictograms are useful for the operator to see what equipments or safety equipments they would need to perform the job. In this case, it is required for the operator to wear safety glasses and safety boots to avoid any injuries while doing the job. On the right hand side here, the operator can easily access the bill of materials. So in this case, since we're only replacing the nozzle, the only material needed is a nozzle. On the right hand side here, we have some information on productivity monitoring with the expected time needed to replace the nozzle and the elapsed time completed. You can always pull out the production report and compare the expected time and elapsed time to see if the operator has completed the job within the expected time or not. Here we have some elements here. There are different types of elements that you can add right from our VKS platform. But in this guidebook, we have a PDF attachment on some technical data information on the equipment. Again, this can be accessed at any time during the work instruction if they need to refer to these information here. Again, you can add any type of documents, um, attach videos or pictures as you'd like. Here we also have a uh, form that we manually created. Again, this can be used as a shared form and does not only have to exist within this guidebook. So uh, an important feature that I wanted to discuss about. So if you go under our main page, under Explore tab and choose the shared objects, you can build this form within two minutes and automatically share it with all of the relevant work instruction that would benefit from having it. Uh, this just gives the opportunity for every operator the chance to order a new replacement part without going to the store and asking a mechanic for another part. They can simply fill out the information, uh, the part number, selecting the best disposition, a uh, picture of the defective part and explaining the reason why it must be replaced. Once they fill out the information and click save, this will be sent via email to the right person right away. So it's a new way of communicating and logging in replacement information within our VKS system. So again, this can be open at any time during the work instruction to input that information. Let's just advance to our next step here. Make sure the machine is stopped. So before jumping to the process, as you see, there is an alert notification. This is a great way to get the operator's attention of a critical step. So anytime there's a critical step, uh, you can always add an alert notification in any of your step. Alert messages can be used as a step as a corrective action. So jumping into the step is pretty straightforward with your picture step and a text showing you what to do. An important feature here is a picture-to-picture -picture annotation. So as you can see, we have multiple image onto this picture step. You can add more images as you'd like. So in this first image, this is the part that would be required with its part number. Again, you can label it in whichever way you want. Again, here we have an outline annotation indicating a exploded view of the location of the nozzle. So pretty straightforward here. Advancing to the next step, Again, we are showcasing a different type of annotation here. As you can see, there are some droplets instead of the normal text. Uh, so here we have two different types of sequence. Anytime you are dealing with operation, critical dimension, quality check, or need to add notes, you can easily add some droplets. So in our first operation sequence, it's telling us to push to unlock the cutting area. And of course, you can assign the instruction to these droplets on the right hand side here. So it says to push the uh, hatch in order to move on to the next operation sequence. So when you press the next step, it, it brings you to the next step here. And here we're essentially removing the old nozzle and turning it counterclockwise and it's showing you exactly where you should do that. So again, another intuitive way for you to follow the step as an operator. Moving on to the next step. 
And again, a very straightforward step, uh, a text indicating the, where the new nozzle part should be inserted. It should require about 1.5 rotations. So again, another operation sequence with its instruction telling you to insert the new nozzle. And in the end, making sure the part is fit and does not move when shaking it. Now, before moving to the next step, we are prompted with a data capturing form for a fit check inspection. Uh, this is a checklist created to make sure that the part has been put in firmly. Now, you can prompt the user to input uh, as much data capturing information as you want. Uh, this is to make sure that you are able to monitor uh, the productivity and have full traceability over this step and to make sure that the uh, operator has validated that the uh, part has been put firmly in place. So you cannot move to the next step unless you check mark this field here. So once you check mark it, it will bring you on to the next and last step. In your last step, you're essentially doing is inserting the old nozzle back into the rack. And again, we have an outline annotation indicating where the old nozzle should be placed. In the end, it is important that you close the hatch. So we have an operation sequence here indicating that you should push this to close the hatch. So that brings us to the end of this guidebook. Again, as you can see, it was a simple uh, SOP. And I hope you learned something new from this uh, Guidebook of the Week series. Thank you all for tuning in. To learn more, you can book a demo at our website at vksapp.com or contact our VKS customer representative. We will be coming up with more Guidebook of the Week series, so stay tuned. Till then, I'll see you all next time.